a little oh. turquoise. I had to go exactly. out. I had to go outside and get this. Ooh, I love that. Good shape. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the reason uh, for something small is as we center this morning, I'd like you to just have your stone in your hands. And we can hold it like a little bowl or you could do prayer hands, whichever feels the most natural to you. Okay. And just begin to close your eyes. And because it's our week of Thanksgiving, you can just imagine pouring all of your gratitudes into this little stone. Letting this stone become infused with all the things for which you're grateful. Pouring Every idea, every idea into this little tiny stone in your hand. The big things, the people in our lives, the small things. Also tuning into uh, connecting with gratitude for the challenging things and people in our lives. Because without friction, we wouldn't grow. And then connecting with gratitude for the simple things, the simplicity of a roof over your head, of clear running water, of sunshine. And just let all of your gratitudes pour into this stone Feeling the weight and shape of the stone in your hand. And as we practice, we will place our stone somewhere close to us on our mat. Maybe at the head of your yoga mat. Create a little space and put your stone there. So we can do that. Just making... A little spot for your stone so that as we practice, every time your eyes land on that stone this morning, it will remind you of all the gratitude with which you infused it. So let's, let's sound the sound of Om, and we'll dive into the physical part of our practice. Om. A nice big inhale here and at the top of your inhale find a gentle retention of your breath and then release the air out of you let's release your chin inwards settle your palms downwards and begin to flutter your eyelids open and as we inhale up let's begin to transition here into just some nice easy neck rolls Nice, easy rolls, moving as quickly or as slowly as makes sense for you this morning. And just tuning in as you begin to move, noticing if there are areas of tenderness in your neck this morning. The next time your chin comes towards center, we'll pause a moment here. And then begin to circle in the opposite direction. And circling here, not only releasing the muscles in our neck, but also bring some awareness into the jaw. Noticing if the jaw here is clenched or soft. And bringing that awareness up into your temples. Notice if there's tension being held in your temples. Good, and bringing here your head back towards center. 
Let's bring your shoulders up towards your ears. Nice big inhale here and then exhale. Soften your shoulders back and down. And we'll inhale, bringing both shoulders up. Exhale, soften your shoulders back and down. And one more time, inhaling up. Exhaling back and down. So we can do press your heart forward here. Lift your gaze. Nice big inhale. And then exhale, round into your spine. Drop your gaze inwards. So moving now into the spine, inhaling forward, exhaling, rounding back. Letting this movement begin to take on your own breath's rhythm. And allowing for the fullness of each breath to guide each movement. Good. Let's bring ourselves to a long straight spine. Take a nice big inhale here. Reach your 10 fingers up. And as you exhale, take an easy turn to the right. Right hand comes behind your body, left hand across your body. Gaze is over your back right shoulder, breathing deeply here. Good, let's inhale, reaching back up towards center, stretching all 10 fingers tall, then exhale, rotate the opposite direction, gaze over your left shoulder, spine nice and long. Good, deep yogi breaths here. One more inhale here, one more exhale. And use an inhale, bring your body back to center, reach your fingertips upwards, join your hands in that sense of gratitude, then bring your hands down to heart center. Good, we'll come to our hands and knees and begin here to work your way towards the pose of the child. And so as we come to the child's pose, you might choose to keep your knees towards each other or widen your knees the width of your yoga mat might choose to curl your toes under. That's gonna make a lesser curve in the lumbar spine. So if the lumbar spine is feeling tricky this morning, maybe lift your heels, or you could uncurl the toes, pressing your hips fully back here. And if your brow point doesn't come easily to the ground, maybe find something to lift up so to support your head on, maybe a block, maybe a blanket. As you soften your brow downwards here, let yourself become aware of the movement of your breath here. And connecting here with that sense of gratitude that you poured into your stones. Knowing that taking this time to infuse yourself in a sense of gratitude improves other areas of your life. Improves your well being. Helps you feel more deeply connected to those around you, to the world. And so you might stay here with arms long, or you might begin to rotate your palms towards each other, join your palms, and maybe bending at the elbows so that your fingers point up to the ceiling. Good. And if your hands are joined here, let's begin to straighten with your next exhale. Rotate your palms down. Pressing into your hands, let's float yourself up to your tabletop position. Hands and knees here. Good. And then using an inhale, let's reach our right fingertips up to the sky. Nice big inhale here. Exhale, bring your hand to your heart. Drop your gaze down. And so we'll inhale, opening big, stretch your arm up. Exhale, bring your hand to your heart, drop your gaze here. Moving with your breath here.
Good. And the next time you close this shape, hand to heart, drop your right hand to the ground. Spread the fingers of both hands wide. Draw your shoulder blades towards each other. Arch your spine. Look up. Big inhale. Exhale. Take the opposite shape. Press into your hands. Round your spine. Bring your gaze down. And then find your neutral spine here. Spine parallel to the ground. Next, inhale. Reach your left fingertips up to the sky. Exhale. Bring your left hand to your heart. Drop your gaze down. And moving here with your breath, inhaling up, exhaling down. Good, we'll do one more inhale, reaching upwards. Let your next exhale bring both hands beneath your shoulders. And here, we'll take another single round of our Chakra Vakasana. So use your inhale, drop your heart forward. Open your throat, lift your eyes. Exhale, begin to press the center of your spine upwards. Release the weight of your head downwards. And then bring yourself back to this neutral spine. Fingers spread nice and wide. So begin to drop your elbows down towards the ground. Maybe join the hands here. I enjoy taking the steeple mudra as they come into this shape, interlacing all but my pointer fingers. I'm going to just bring in some awareness to the shoulder girdle on the back body here. It's to feel that frame from the shoulder blades down to the elbows. That's a nice frame. And then allow the muscles around this frame to soften. So you might stay right here or might begin to bring this up into a dolphin pose by curling your toes under, pressing your hips up and back, maybe lifting the gaze upwards. And maybe if our hips are up, maybe we'll play with how it feels to walk the toes slightly forward. It's still connecting, though, with that frame of support, that frame from the elbows to the shoulders, nice and strong. And then seeing what you can soften around that area of support. Maybe it's softening into the jaw again. On the next exhale, let's begin to lower your lifted knees. I'm going to press your hands down, straightening into your arms. And let's bring our right foot forward between our hands. Right foot forward. Good. And this is a good place if you're working with them. Maybe you'll grab your blocks. Good. So it's letting your hips sink forward here. Lift the gaze up. And as we exhale, let's begin to straighten into our front leg, send your hips back. So we're gonna inhale, hips come forward, throat begins to open as the eyes lift. Exhale, straighten into your front leg, bring your hips back, rounding into your low back. And so moving here with your breath, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Good, and the next time we inhale forward, let's all pause here. Pausing at this forward shape. Find this action of subtly drawing the inner thighs towards each other. Good, use an exhale, draw your low belly in, bring both hands to your heart. Good, so back toes could be curled under here, it could be uncurled. Curling under will offer a little bit more stability. Use an inhale, stretch your fingers up. Good, pause here. Keep your thumbs moving towards the back plane. Keep all 10 fingers radiating upwards and find a conscious softening of your shoulder blades inwards. Maybe a softening of your hips even more deeply forward. Good, next exhale, let's bring both hands to heart center. So we're going to open the eyes wide and then rotate away from your front knee. So rotating towards the left. Gaze is going to come over that left shoulder. 
Yeah, so we're away from that front knee. Taking an open twist this morning. Good, and an inhale, let's bring it back towards center. As you come back towards center, again, extend your arms upwards, peel your thumbs backwards. Good, bring your awareness again to that shoulder girdle, bring the shoulder blades towards each other. Find a lift in your shoulder girdle that might offer space to soften backwards even more. And then exhale, bring both hands through heart center, down to the ground. This time hands are gonna come on the inside of that front foot. And so always to offer to use our blocks here as we come into whichever shape here in this morning of our lizard pose. And so I, I really enjoy taking this with long straight arms. A lot of people enjoy bending the elbows here, bringing the forearms down to the ground. Feel free to take that variation if it serves you. Again, blocks are always an option. Maybe here contemplating those stones of gratitude, if they're in your gaze. It's connecting with that literal vibration of gratitude that lifts up the energetic vibration of your whole being. Good. Next time you exhale, let's begin to walk your hands in either side of your front foot. Bring your front foot back in towards your midline. If you have blocks here, remove your blocks so that you have space to bring your palms fully to the ground. Curl your back toes under. Let's lift the back knee up and we'll step our front foot backwards here. Come into the shape of our downward dog. And as this is our first downward dog, maybe your body wants to bend and straighten opposite legs. Maybe we want to play with separating the hands, the width of your mat, or separating your feet, the width of your mat. Or maybe you want to be in stillness, allowing the breath to be the movement in this shape. Good, if we're in movement, let's come to a couple breaths in stillness. So heels could be lifted here. Keep pressing your hips up and back. Keep your head nice and heavy. And with your next exhale, let's begin to drop both knees down to the ground, returning to this hands and knees shape. Begin to invite now the left foot forward between the hands. Maybe using blocks on this side. And begin now to draw the outer edges of your arms towards the back of your yoga mat. With that action, lift your heart forward, lift your gaze up. Big inhale here, fill this shape. And as you exhale, straight in into your front leg, drop your gaze down. And so moving on this side into this dynamic lunge, inhaling, coming forward. Exhaling, drawing inwards. Letting your own breath's rhythm be your guide here. Good, the next time we come forward, we'll take this pause. Good, firm up your foundation here. Draw the inner edges of your thighs towards each other. Pour the air out of you on an exhale. Draw your belly inwards and then bring both hands here to heart center. Good, and if you'd like that extra stability, you can always curl those back toes under. Take a nice inhale here. Reach all 10 fingers upwards. Good, so holding the shape, feel that extension upwards through the fingers. 
Feel that grounding downwards through your lower knee, through your front heel. And maybe we can play with this action of bringing the thumbs a little bit closer to that plane of space behind us. Beginning to open the chest here. A nice big inhale here, stretching, extending through the 10 fingers. Let your exhale guide your hands to Anjali Mudra. And then we'll open the arms, rotating now to the right. So away from that front knee. Gaze comes towards the right thumb. Breathing deeply here. Good, on an inhale, let's bring it back towards center. Stretch your fingers up to the sky. Good, so we might stay here, arms straight up and down, or might begin again drawing the outer edges of your arms towards that space behind you. Firm the shoulder blades towards each other. Maybe find a light lift to your sternum. Breathe into this space that you're creating. And next exhale, let's bring our hands through heart center all the way down, this time on the inner edge of your front foot. Walking that front foot just slightly away from your midline to create the space here. And you might choose to keep your arms long here. You might choose to bend at the elbows, maybe bringing the elbows down to a block if you're working with it. Breathing deeply as we settle into this deeper hip stretch of our lizard pose. Perhaps taking in that view of your gratitude stones. Good, and with your next inhale, let's begin to inch that foot in between both hands. Removing any blocks you might have been using here so that you have space to spread your fingers nice and wide, fully on your mat. And with your next in-breath, let's curl your back toes under, lift your back knee up, step your front foot backwards, returning here to that shape of Adho Mukha Svanasana, or downward facing dog. Allowing here for your breath to be steady, for your spine to be nice and long. Good, connecting with this idea of strength and structure. That structure being the strong bones of your body here and then softness in the surrounding muscles. So see what you can soften here. Good, and next exhale, let's bring both knees down to the ground, returning here to the shape of your tabletop. And let's begin to invite now the right foot, right foot forward between your hands, returning to the shape of the lunge. Let's curl the left toes under, use an inhale, bring both hands to heart center, coming to our lifted lunge. Begin to roll your shoulders backwards. As you roll your shoulders backwards, find that action of drawing together of the shoulder blades, peel your heart up, maybe sink the hips forward. Good, nice big inhale here. Let's begin to lengthen forward. And as you exhale, we're gonna rotate left elbow to the outer edge of your right knee. So now twisting towards that front leg, roll your top shoulder open, lean away from your front knee, leaning into that shoulder girdle. And we might stay here, back knee down, or you might press into your back toes, lifting that back knee up and away from the ground. Keep your breath steady here. Good, if that back knee is lifted, use an exhale, gently lower your back knee. 
Use an inhale, unwind your body, stretch your fingers upwards, reach your fingers backwards, breathing here into our Anjaneyasana. And then exhale here, bring both hands down to the ground. Plant your hands, lift your back knee up, step your front foot back, coming here to your Adho Mukha Svanasana. Nice, deep yogi breaths. Inhale, lift your heels, float your shoulders over your wrists, bring yourself to your plank pose. Exhale, lower knees, chin, chest, eight points to the ground and release the weight of your body. Roll your shoulders backwards, peel your heart up, lifting up here into the shape of the cobra. Breathing here. And then exhale, lowering down. Bring yourself back up now to hands and knees, please. Left foot now will come forward between both hands. Use an inhale, bring both hands to heart center. Roll your shoulders backwards. Find that action of shoulder blades drawing towards each other, sternum lifting, sinking perhaps a little more into that front knee. And then inhale, lengthen your front body over your front thigh, rotate towards your knee, hook the opposite elbow, and then roll your top shoulder open. Maybe the gaze lifts. Maybe it stays straight ahead. Maybe it rotates downwards. An option to keep knee down or press into your back toes. Press that back knee up and away from the ground. Find your smooth breath here. Next exhale, let's bring our back knee back down if it's lifted. Use an inhale, unwind your body, stretch all 10 fingers up, reach backwards with your thumbs, lift with your sternum, with your eyes. And then inhale, bring your hands all the way back down to the earth. Curl your back toes under, lift your knee upwards, step your front foot backwards here to the long line of your spine, your downward dog. Use an inhale, begin to press into your toes. Bring your head, heart, hips into a straight line as we move into our plank pose. And then exhale, lower knees, chin, chest to the earth. Release the weight of your body down, uncurl your toes, roll your shoulders backwards, press it up into your cobra pose, Bhujangasana here. Breathing deeply. Connect with a smile in your heart center. And then exhale, lower your chest here. Press into your hands and your knees. Find yourself here, back in your tabletop position. And then let's lift the hips up and back, returning to our downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Use an inhale, lift your gaze, lift your heels, walk your toes forward to the front of your mat. As you come forward, rise halfway, fingers down, spine long. Exhale, draw your belly button in, fold here. Bring both hands to your hips, roll your shoulders onto your spine. Use an exhale, rise up into your mountain pose and inhale, stretching tall. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra here. Nice big inhale, reach upwards. Exhale, bring both hands to heart center. And if you're not already, come on to the very tippy top line of your yoga mat. Take an inhale here, reach the right knee upwards. Just 
a moment, balancing. And then let's step the right toes backwards. As the right toes land, press your heel downwards. Rotate your toes to point to the upper right corner of your mat. Bend into your left knee. So setting up for warrior one legs. Always option to separate your feet laterally. That gives you a little more steadiness. Let's bring both hands to your hips. Roll your shoulders backwards here. We're going to draw the inner elbows towards each other and then maybe interlace your fingers. Extend your hands away from your sacrum. Good. So we're hands on hips or fingers interlace. Let's take a nice inhale. Peel your heart upwards. Exhale. Keep pressing into your back heel. Lower your heart forwards here. Coming to our humble warrior. Good, keep pressing into that back heel. Let that action lift your torso upwards. Release your hands, stretching up here into our classic warrior. And then draw your hands towards each other. Bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. Release your back heel, spin your back heel forward. Good, fix your gaze on a non-moving point, the very top line of your yoga mat. And as you're ready, we're gonna inhale, back toes are gonna come forward, they're gonna cross up and over that front leg. So we're gonna come forward into eagle legs. So forward, up and over, can press those toes into the ground here. Good, option to stay here. Or let's play with our eagle pose. Separate your palms away from each other. Good, palms face the sky as you cross left elbow over right. Good, maybe grab for opposite shoulders here. Lift your elbows up. So there's a straight line from your shoulder to your elbow. Or perhaps you'll draw the back or the palms of the hands towards each other, coming more fully into our Garudasana. Option to stay here, right toes down, pressing into the ground, or maybe you'll bend a little more fully into the left knee. Maybe those right toes want to scoop behind the left shin. Good, if that right toes are lifted, let's plug those right toes back into the ground. Peel your elbows upwards, lift your gaze, big inhale here, and then exhale, hinge forward at your hips. Drop the weight of your head downwards here. Good, and an inhale, let's unwind your arms, unwind your legs. Stretch all 10 fingers up to the sky. Bring both hands to heart center here and then shake out opposite arm, opposite leg. And we'll bring ourselves back to that very top line of your yoga mat. Find both hands at heart center, pressing palm to palm. Let your gaze fix on a non-moving point. Good, and as you feel steady and ready, let's bring the left knee upwards, balancing here. Next exhale, let's step the left toes backwards, rotate so the left toes point upper left corner of your mat, plug your heel down, bend into that right knee. Good, give yourself some time to find your stability here in our warrior one on this side. And then the hands can come to the hips here, roll your shoulders open, point your elbows towards the wall behind you, or take that action of interlacing your fingers, reaching your hands away from your sacrum. And whether your hands are on your hips or joined behind you, let's press into your back heel, peel your heart upwards, lift your gaze, keep that front knee bent. Big inhale, fill your body with goodness. Exhale, keep pressing into your back heel as you soften your heart forwards here into our humble warrior.
Good, keep pressing into that back heel. Release your hands, sweep your arms upwards as we come back into our warrior one, Virabhadrasana one, strong and fierce. And join both hands at heart center. Release your back heel, spin those toes to point forward. Again, fix your gaze in that non-moving point. On an inhale, bring your back toes forward and then up and over. Cross those toes on the ground here. Good. Finding our steadiness as we set up on this side for our eagle pose. Let's separate the palms away from each other. Rotate hands to face the sky. And this time, right hand will land on top as we cross elbow over elbow. Bend into your elbows. Reach backwards for the outer edges of your shoulders. Giving yourself a little hug here, or maybe bring the back or the palms of the hands together as you interlace your forearms, coming into your eagle pose. Might keep those left toes firmly rooted into the ground, or you might play with how it feels to bend into the right knee and joining the left toes behind the right shins. Good, and if you have that bind, let's plug those toes down here. Peel your shoulders, I'm sorry, peel the elbows upward. Lift your gaze. And then exhale, hinge at the hips. Let gravity take the weight of your forearms down as you bring your gaze down and in. Good, on an inhale, unwind your arms, unwind your legs, come all the way up towards standing, reach your hands up, and then bring both hands to heart center. Good, take a big inhale here, Urdhva Hastasana, reach your fingers up and back. Exhale, pour yourself forward into the shape of your forward fold. Take your half lift as you inhale. Soften inwards as you exhale, plant your hands down, step your toes back, coming into the shape of your downward dog. Breathing deeply here. Good, option to stay here or bring both knees fully down to the ground. Take an inhale, roll your shoulders backwards, pull your heart upward. Exhale, press the center of your spine up. Good, curling the 10 toes under. Let's take a seat on the heels. And always the option to keep your fingertips on the ground if sitting on the heels is too much for the plantar fascia. Let's join our hands at heart center here. Good, so hands at heart center, we can play with hands on hips, or since we're playing with gratitude, we could play with our prayer hands behind the back, bringing palm to palm behind the back, if that makes sense for you. Nice deep breaths here. We're able to stretch this way into our plantar fascia. We're giving the whole body a nice stretch. Stretching that root of our fascia where the fascia plugs in on our back body. Let's release the hands here. Bring your fingertips forward, release your toes from the ground. Give them a nice little wiggle, maybe a little rotation into your ankles. And let's go ahead and bring your right foot forward, right foot forward between your hands. Curl your back toes under, lift your back knee away from the ground. We're gonna do two actions here. So we're gonna straighten into the right leg. We're also gonna draw the back leg inward so we can bring that heel down, straightening into the back leg. Good, so blocks here are nice. If you find that the floor feels a little too far away, go ahead and bring some blocks underneath your hands. So coming here into our intense stretch, Parsvottanasana. And so we could stay here intensely stretching, or we could play with how we feel. So we're going to really keep this weight into the right heel, but play with how it feels to gently lift the back heel away from the ground. 
maybe drawing those back toes upwards. Can be helpful there to walk your fingertips backwards, give yourself something to root into before lifting those back toes upwards. And then lowering the toes downwards, playing a little bit with our flamingo pose. Good, let's begin to bend into our front knee a little bit deeper. Step your left foot backwards, coming back to a high lunge. Lower your back knee all the way to the ground. And then shorten the space between your front heel and your back knee. So draw those two points closer towards each other. Use an exhale, draw your belly inwards. Bring both hands to heart center. And then settle both hands onto your hips here. Point your elbows backwards. Good. So if you don't here, you might want to give yourself a little extra support underneath that back knee. We're going to be asking quite a bit of it. So I'm on the carpet. I'll get a little lucky there. But if you're not, you might grab a blanket to put underneath your knee here. Good, so option to stay here, back knee down, or we could bring our right hand to our right knee. Let your hips sink forward and lift your back toes away from the ground, reaching backwards with the left hand to grab the outer edge of that left foot. Good, so we're balancing here. If you haven't already, you might let your gaze begin to connect with a drishti here. And if this feels good, if you have the left foot and the left hand, perhaps we'll bring the right hand backwards, grabbing hold of both sides of the foot with your hand. And if you're there, you might even play with how it feels to inch that front foot even further forward. So lengthening that space that we initially shortened between your front heel and your back knee. Good, and so always easing off if you start to feel pain in your knee joint, easing off. Good. And if you have a hold of the inner edge of your back foot, let's release, bring your right hand back to your knee. If you have a hold of the outer edge of that back foot, release the left hand from the foot. Bring both hands fully to the ground here. Let's invite our front foot back, our left foot forward. Good, curl your back toes under, lift your hips and knee upwards. Begin to straighten into your left leg and then walk the right toes inwards as much as you need to to bring the right heel to the ground while keeping the right leg straight. So transitioning on this side to our Parsvottanasana. In this shape, all 10 toes are pointing directly forward. We're not angling the toes as we do in our warriors. Good, so maybe using blocks to lift your hands away from the ground here. Maybe staying right here, maybe rotating your fingers backwards, walking your fingers slightly towards your back toes, and then really beginning to wade into the front heel, also the ball of the front foot. So especially focusing on wading underneath the front big toe, pressing into the back fingertips, seeing how it might feel to release some of the weight off of the back leg. So we might just play with this, right? So back toes are down, but back heel is lifted. Really not as much weight in that back leg. And if that feels good, you could play with what might it feel like to lift those back toes up. Lift those back toes up, coming into our flamingo pose. And then rotating, if you've taken that <clears throat> rotation of fingers back, bringing them forward again here, release your back heel, bend into your front knee and hop the back toes back. Make this a nice big lunge and then lower that back knee fully down to the ground. Good, shrink the space between your front heel and your back knee. And then on an inhale, bring both hands here to heart center. Good, so we might stay here. We might bring our hands to our hips. We might begin to feel what it might feel like to bring the front hand to your front knee, 
giving some stability there. Let your gaze begin to focus on a non-moving point. Good, and then maybe bending into that back knee, taking a hold of the outer edge of your right foot with your right hand. And so as we move into balance, let your gaze stay focused on that non-moving point. Maybe the left hand wants to come around and grab the inner edge of your right foot. And then if we're there and feeling good, we might experiment with scooting that front foot slightly more forward. Good, and then an exhale. Let's send our front hand back to our knee if it's not there already. Releasing your right foot with your right hand very gently. Bring both hands down to the ground and bite this front foot backwards. And we'll lift the hips up and back, coming here to our downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Good, let's exhale, bring both knees down to the ground. Let's invite your front foot forward between your hands. Walk your right foot to the left side of your mat. Lower your right knee to the ground. And as your hips sink downwards, curl your back toes under. Inch that back knee and foot further away from your body before uncurling the toes. And if you have some space underneath that right hip, you might slide a blanket. I have a spare yoga mat. I'm going to just slide underneath that space. And then walk your hands back beneath your shoulders here. So coming here into our king pigeon pose. You might stay here or you might make that grab, bending into your left knee, reaching behind you with the left hand, grabbing a hold of the left foot. Maybe the right fingertips want to extend upwards here. Find your steady breath. Find that smile in your heart. And then if you do have hold of the back foot, let's release it here. Bring both hands down to the ground and just begin to walk your hands forward here. Might make a prayer hand with both hands joining towards each other and rest your forehead onto that space made by your thumbs. Or you might choose to cross forearms, lowering your forehead all the way down to the ground. Coming to our grateful pigeon, our Ekapata Rajakapatasana. Stay centered on your breath here. Let your thoughts be like clouds floating across the sky. On your next inhale, begin to straighten into your arms, pressing your palms back into the ground, removing anything you might have had beneath your right hip. Let's curl the back toes under, begin to press into your hands and your back toes and release that front foot back, coming here to your downward dog, maybe coming to a three-legged dog, lifting that right knee up and bending and straightening into your lifted right leg, bringing some blood, some energy back into the compression we created with that shape. And if we're here in a three-legged dog, let's rotate toes and knees and hips pointing down, lower that right leg to the ground. Bend into both knees, settle both knees on the ground, and then bring your left foot, left foot forward. 
left foot begins to work towards the right side of your mat as your knee comes downwards. And then curl your right toes under, lengthen your right leg long behind you before uncurling the toes and using support if you need it here, propping up your left hip so that both hips are even. So you're gonna walk your hands beneath your shoulders, pull the outer edges of your arms backwards, isometrically press your fingers into the ground, making the action to drag those fingers back towards your hips, pulling your heart forward, maybe staying here, maybe bending into the right knee, grabbing a hold of the right foot with the right hand. And if we're here, maybe the left hand wants to reach up and back. Good, and if we're here, hands lifted, let's gently release that front hand, releasing that back foot if you have it. Begin to walk your hands and elbows forward, maybe finding prayer hands to rest your head on, maybe stacking forearm over forearm. And return here to the steadiness of your breath as we come to this pigeon pose. And then an inhale, looking gently to straighten into your arms, releasing any support you might have beneath your left hip. Let's curl your right toes under, lift your right knee upwards, and then we'll step it back here to our downward dog. Option for both feet down, or take that lift and extension of your left leg, maybe bending into the left knee, finding that bending, straightening. And then bringing all limbs back down to the ground. Bend into the knees here, lower your knees downwards, perhaps separating them the width of your mat, perhaps not. And coming back to this pose of the child. Taking any variation of this balasana pose of the child that makes sense to you. And if your arms are bent, beginning to work them forward, bringing your palms back to the ground. Lift yourself through kneeling and then just come straight onto your back body. Come to lying on your spine. And as you come down to your back, let's bring your knees inwards, hug your knees here. And then keep your knees bent, but release both feet to the ground. As you release your feet to the ground, press into your feet, lift and shift your hips to the right slightly. Bring your knees to the left and extend your right arm long to the right, rotating your gaze to the right. Coming here into our reclining twist with deep breaths.
And then an inhale, bringing your whole body back towards center. And press here into your feet, lift and shift your hips. Now to the left, release both knees to the right. And as your knees release to the right, you can extend your left arm long, rotate your gaze looking left. Coming here back to your breath. And on an inhale, let's bring ourselves back towards center. And you might hear, grab a hold of those stones. Place those stones just on the center of your heart or on your belly. As you lengthen your body long here, coming into your Shavasana. And always the option to slip something soft beneath your knees if your low back feels a little bit crunchy. Well, let your body rest here, heavy on your mat. Allowing for the weight of your body to be fully supported here and allowing for that gratitude with which you infused your stones just to seep back into your body here. Letting yourself rest here Surrounded by support. Uplifted by gratitude. Allowing your whole body to relax here. In the stillness of this Shavasana. Very gently beginning to bring your awareness here back to your breath. And beginning to find some small movement into your fingers and your toes. into your wrists, and your ankles. And 
And then taking a hold of your stone into your hands, stretch your hands over your head, stretch your toes forward, breathe the length of your body. And then hug your knees in towards your chest. Wrap your arms around your knees, give yourself a squeeze. Give yourself some movement side to side. Let yourself rest easy on one side. Use your top arm pressing down to bring your body up to a seat. And bringing here your hands with your stones either to prayer or to little cupped hands in front of you. Letting your eyes close here as you again infuse into that sensation of thankfulness. You can imagine that sense of gratitude spreading outwards from you, spreading outwards into your whole home, and filling your neighborhood, the city your state and spreading throughout the whole world, all vibrating to this higher vibration 